I just want to raise a point to everybody here who's listening to me that uh, about the famine and all that, about the Great Irish Famine. I just want to raise a point to to use people in front of me right here, right now. If you, if you are listening to this on a video or anything, then it's I'm talking to a few people here. So uh, basically the famine was caused by the English. It was the English for being the cunts and decided to take corn off the fucking the stupid bollocks of a country, which is the own, which made it a lot worse. And the British government opened Westminster, done nothing about it, didn't help the Irish, couldn't be bothered with the Irish, taught them as filthy idiots. That's basically what Lloyd George and the West Ham taught. They taught we were filthy idiots. Filthy idiots. Walk for nothing. Do all their dirty work. Do all the dirty work. Well, let me tell you something. 1.5 million people died during the Great Famine. And that's all because of potato... Because of the... And no more emigrated too, I forgot to say. But it's all because of the British Empire. The British Empire. And the Queen and the King. Or the King, whatever the fuck you want to call them. It's all their fault. It's not, it's not anybody else's fault. It's that cunts over in England. They could have said this money, but no, they were too busy taking stuff out of Ireland to give to their people and let the Irish starve to death or die if with famine or whatever the fuck they, the British Empire thought they would let Ireland do. But still, oh, about five, three or four million people left and went to America, to different countries, left Ireland, abandoned the country. I mean, and the British Empire couldn't give five fucks. It was just, it was just land to them. It was just, these people were just nothing to the British Empire, to the King and Queen. It's the same today. The Queen and Queen doesn't give five fucks about her, the people of Ireland, or the people of Northern Ireland. She doesn't care about Jews. She doesn't care. She honestly couldn't care. And it's all the British Empire's fault. It's the Crown's fault for fucking starving 1.5 million people. And let me tell you something, the Irish population has never got back up. We have 4 million, but it, by that time in, in 1845, it was over 10 million people in Ireland. Where's the 10 million now? If there, there must be family. If they kill all the family members of the family and they all wiped themselves out. Because I'm going to shortly tell you they probably did. And there wasn't many left because they all died with the famine. And there was nobody able to produce more children and all that. So... Total 4 million people in the Republic of Ireland. And let me tell you something. They're all nearly British people. It's disgrace. There's Irish people lying on the streets of Dublin. Cork. Mayo. Every county in Ireland. And there's people from England in bloody fucking houses. And the government is doing shite. And 1.5 million people died. And the government should just wake up. And see that it's the British Empire's fault. For taking corn. For taking all the stuff out of Ireland during the famine and not giving toppings to the Irish people. And the black and tans were going away with their big long wrench guns and the British army beaten senselessly for no reason. And Protestant people going around thinking they were big fucking tough guys. And big landlords over in England, they put up the wets and used to burn houses and all that. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You don't see that. They don't think they've done that in England. Did they do, did the landlords go and burn houses and get the army to p put you out of the house and get you off your way and let you get the famine or whatever? I don't think so. I honestly don't think so because they just didn't care about the Irish. These English landlords didn't give five absolute fucks about us. And we're supposed to bow to the king. We're supposed to be all nice and friends with the king and crown and all that fucking shite. Well, let me tell you something. And let me tell you something for no reason, everybody who's listening to me, or anybody who's waiting for me right here, right now, and you're looking at me like you haven't got a notion what I'm talking about, or you're no dead wifey. You just remember the borders. You remember the border, don't you? All you just remember the border. No point denying that you didn't. You did. You honestly did. Now, you just remember being taken out of your car by the British Army and put up with guns stuck in your face. And armoured cars every fucking well standing around you. About 50 soldiers around you. And there's only two of you. And they'll have to walk there and they're shouting at you and abusing you. You ain't had to shite. 
I mean, what kind of an empire is that? I know it's during dark times, but what kind of an empire will put 50 soldiers against two people? Two people! And they've done nothing wrong. And so I show you I remember, and I show you I remember Bloody Sunday. I'm, I don't think he would forget that day. Like you, it might be now, you, sir, you remember that time, Anna. You just remember that, I can see it in your faces. You just remember that day. You just might be 40, but you just remember them days. You, you just do, but you just don't want to remember it. Because you just remember all the pain and suffering the British Empire done to this country. And they're still doing it to this country. And it, let me tell you something for Norton. The amount of people who emigrated. It's the same amount of people we have, 4.3 million. And let me tell you something. Where's all the Irish people gone? They're not in Ireland. We, we have our foreigners. This country's our foreigner country now. Religion, religion, people don't do religion in this country. We used to be a Catholic and Protestant majority. Now we have Muslims, Cat uh, Jehovah's and everything. And they're taking all the jobs. Putting our Irish people on the streets. I can see uh, and Protestants have been the worst too. Putting more people on the street. Taking the big tough guys. For years and years, the Protestant majority in the north. I mean, the amount of people that died. I mean, you had just it just went down so bad in the last in the. It's just you have to, and then they expected us to fight in World War One when it came. The British Empire were like, "Oh, Irish cuts can go and fight," but they were just didn't take anything of Irish people. They just sent them out to battle. Nearly no helmets, nearly no good gear at all. Send them out to a bloody debt, pure debt. Send them from Ireland and pump some good wages and then give them shite. Then just going off to Germany and fighting against the German Germans. And didn't give top and didn't care what happened to them. Didn't care, didn't care. They honestly didn't care what happened to the Irish people. If they had to go and fight for king and country because they were forced. I mean, what kind of an empire in the name of God forces? I mean, thanks be the God for the 1916 heroes. I hope all them British cuts suffered dreadfully. Whoever was a British soldier that day in Kosh, I hope they died in pain. In severe and utter pain, and our heroes of 1916 should be honoured in highest honour and not disrespected by any means necessary. They suffered death for this country. The same as Jesus. But anyway, we do, I better not talk about that because the people keep an eye about it. So anyway. They suffered that. They took bullets. Bullets. And committed them jail. Over a flag. And over a public. That they dissolved. And they wanted so dearly. And they were willing to sacrifice every life, the, every bone in their body to get independence. And they died for that country we have today. And we don't show them enough respect. We don't take about them every day. Well, let me tell you something. We should take about them every day. People, there was... You don't understand how bad this famine was. You used one around definitely because he's in our age. But it just... There was bodies lying everywhere. I remember hearing some tale of an old person. Sadly, God, God bless us and save us, but... This person's dead. Their grandmother said this to them before she died. That the black and tans, this was a few years after the famine, were going into everybody's house and just beating them up. This is a one cabin. We're just going in and for no reason just kicking people around the place. For no reason because they were Catholics. I don't hear any, I don't hear anybody apologising for that. And as soon as, as soon as Catholics hit anybody, there's a bloody fucking news story on it. I mean, for God's sake, what kind of an empire does that to uh, the time whole citizens? And thanks be the God we're not under British rule. Because every person in this republic will revolt revo against the king and crown. Because this is honestly... The, you don't understand, people. You, do, you just don't understand the amount of people who died. We're never going to ever, ever, ever going to regain our population. We lost one point... Five million people of Irish blood. 
Irish blood, we lost so many dear people of Ireland. For what? For the king and crown. And maybe we should add a few more, because they did kill a lot of our freedom fighters in 1916, so I could add that on. Maybe that'd be about... Then add the people who died in World War One. I add that on, because they died for the king and crown. It was, their, it was the English's fault. They didn't have to kill the volunteers. They didn't have to kill all the volunteers. They didn't have to execute James Connolly. They didn't have to execute Carl Brewer. They didn't have to execute anybody. They didn't have to. So why did they do it? Because they knew that the Irish had enough of them and they wanted them gone. Gone. That's one word you don't hear often. We want them gone. And that's what brings us here today. But still, the six counties of the, of the north remain in evil's hands. So let me tell you something. We should never bow down to a foreign army or to a foreign crown. We are Irish people. And Irish blood, we have, it's the only thing we have. Our flag is our tricolour. It's our friend. It's our ally. It will help us in our time of need, in a time of war, in a time of every place. You must adore your Irish flag, no matter the cost. We must protect and save our great nation. For any more hardships that might come in the future, please God there will be another famine like this. But someday, please God our country will regain its population and be one of the glorious. It is a still a glorious nation, but it would be even glorious if we had 10 million people back. It would be absolutely glorious. So I want to thank everybody for listening. Adrian Logan.